Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us uh, as part of this Discover Lancaster event today. Uh, my name's Erin Wilson. I'm part of the recruitment team working at Lancaster University. I'm joined today by my colleagues Libby and Gerda, who will be helping me in this presentation. Libby will be taking the majority of this presenting on sustainability at Lancaster, and myself and Gerda will be monitoring the chat throughout. So if you do have any questions, feel free to pop them in uh, and we'll pick them up either throughout the presentation or we might have some minutes at the end just to go through anything you do pick up. Um, so I'll hand over to Libby now. She'll take the majority of the presentation. And like I said, if you do have any questions, pop them in. We'll pick them up throughout. Hi, everybody. Um, I hope you can hear me. So I'm going to go through some of the stuff we do at Lancaster with sustainability. Um, so I'm a postgrad researcher at the moment looking into environmental psychology and recycling. But I also have an undergraduate degree, which I also studied at Lancaster in politics and international relations. So I've been here for four years now. So during this presentation, I'm just going to talk a little bit about some of the sustainability initiatives that we have at Lancaster. Looking at our campus, as well as different projects, how you can get involved as students and some of our research and how it impacts local communities. And let me just put my camera on. Here we are. So, starting off with some of our campus buildings. Um, here are three different pictures of buildings on campus that we're really proud of. On the far left, you can see the Leica building. So that stands for Lancaster Institute for Contemporary Arts. That's where you'll study if you do any art-based degrees, um, fine art, photography, film, anything like that. Now, this building was completed in 2011. And it's the first higher education building ever, um, and only the second building ever to receive a BREAM outstanding rating. So BREAM is a sustainability assessment method that we use for projects, infrastructure and buildings. And so to receive outstanding was incredibly prestigious. Like is built with environmentally responsible timber and sustainable cladding, and it also has natural ventilation. The building is incredibly energy efficient, and in my opinion, it's really pretty inside. Around the building, as you can see in the picture, there's a moat and that's home to a variety of different plants and fish and ducks. In springtime, we also get ducklings, which are incredibly cute and keeping my eye out for them at the moment. And the middle picture shows some of our accommodation. So these are called eco residences. They were built in 2009 and they belong to County and Grisdale College. We call them townhouses and they're award winning eco friendly accommodation with a BREAM excellent rating, which is the second best rating you can get. They also won the Green Gown Award in 2009 after they were completed. And the Green Gown Award is basically an award for sustainability in higher education. Lancaster's won it a few times for different things, um, but it's really, really cool. They're made with renewable materials and sustainable timber, just like Leica. And you can see some of the architecture is quite similar. And some of them have solar panel technology, which helps to save energy, and they all have um, movement sensor lighting, so that reduces energy waste. It means that if you leave the kitchen unoccupied for a while, the light will turn off automatically. Then on the far right, we have a picture which is taken inside the Health and Innovation Campus One building, which is where you'll study if you do medicine or any health related topic. And this was repeat completed, I think, late 2020, so it's quite a new building. And it again has a BREAM excellent rating for sustainability and it costs 41 million pounds. So it's a really, really big investment into campus and made with recycled materials designed to minimize water and energy use. And around the building, there's quite a lot of green space. And so we've planted 615 meters of new hedgerow and installed 200 trees. So it's really good for wildlife and animals in the surrounding area. And it makes for quite a nice walk down from the main bit of campus, in my opinion. So here are a few more pictures of campus, this time looking at some of our outdoor spaces. On the far left, we have the Eco Hub, which is an area where students and volunteers can grow crops as well as raise chickens and keep bees. You can volunteer there if you're a student and they'll train you up on how to do everything and how everything works and how to raise and keep the chickens and bees. They also sell produce on campus at both the weekly market, which we have once a week in the middle of campus and at the student union run store, which is called Central. It's well worth a visit if you come up to campus for an open day or anything like that. And I've had a lot of fun volunteering there over the years. The middle picture shows some of the water we have on campus. So campus is home to a bunch of different ponds 
Um, there's quite a few dotted all around campus, as well as a larger lake, which is on the outskirts of campus. And this particular pond is right outside the psychology building and the engineering buildings. And it's near Fylde College. As you can see, it's home to a lot of wildlife and all of the water areas on campus are built to support biodiversity. So this ends up being a lot of wildlife across campus and a lot of ducks, which Lancaster is quite famous for. The picture on the far right shows part of the woodland walk. So around the edge of campus, you have a lot of woodland and we've built an accessible woodland walk trail, which loops around the entirety of campus. The walk's really beautiful and sometimes there are different projects that are happening around it and different things that are going on. And in May, we also do No Mow May, which is where essentially we just don't cut the grass for a month. And that leads to wildflowers like springing up all around campus. And because of this and because of things like the Woodland Walk, campus is actually home to a few different species of endangered moths and butterflies. And we've actually had a few student projects where students have gone and surveyed the moths and learned a bit more about them. So if you're interested in it academically, that's something you can get involved in. We're now going to take a little look at energy on campus. So Lancaster University is already the highest producer of renewable energy out of all UK universities. So this is something we take very seriously. And we've also reduced our electricity and heating emissions by 50% since 2005. So we're doing really well. And in the picture, you can see our wind turbine, which belongs to campus. It's in an absolutely stunning location. And this provides 11 to 17 percent of the university's electricity. It's also only a five to ten minute walk from campus. So if you want to visit it, I will I would visit, I would recommend that. And I will say it's significantly bigger in person than it looks in the picture. I think I felt quite dizzy the first time I saw it. You can see it from most of campus, um, but especially if you live up on the north side of campus, you'll be able to see it from your accommodation window. We also have a biomass boiler, which burns organic material such as wood chips to generate heat and that feeds into the university's heating system. And we source the wood chips from local commercial forests, everything within 30 miles of the university. So we keep it really, really local. And these forests are managed sustainably. So they're replanted after harvesting and they're managed on a really long-term basis, which is the best way for the environment. Now the biomass boiler supplies about 16% of campus heating demand. So it's really good to have that independent and sustainable source of energy. Each year, we also have different campaigns to encourage sustainable energy use on campus. One of these is called the Student Switch Off, and it's a national competition that Lancaster does really well in. And it's basically a competition to see which flats on campus can save the most energy throughout a set time period. So you do things like you turn off your heating and your lighting when you're not using it, and you switch off electronics at the mains because... Electronics on standby actually do use quite a lot of energy. So just this year, in March 2020, so last month really, Lancaster was given planning permission by the local council to build a new solar farm next to the campus. This will consist of 36,000 individual solar panels and it will cover a couple of different fields of university-owned agricultural land. The solar farm will generate enough energy to power the equivalent of 3,000 homes per year. So that's a huge amount of energy and it will also be fully reversible in its infrastructure. So it can be fully restored to its previous state once the solar farm reaches the end of its life. So meaning that we're making no permanent changes to the landscape or to any of the fields. And we're hoping that the solar farm will cause a reduction in utility based emissions by over 40 percent. So this is going to be absolutely critical for the university's drive to be net zero. And looking at some of the transport around campus, so about 500 staff and over a thousand students cycle to campus as their main mode of travel. We have two different signed cycle paths between campus and the local town, and both of these have traffic free sections, so it's pretty safe. The journey takes about 20 minutes in my experience. Um, for me, it often takes slightly longer on the way to campus and slightly shorter on the way back as campus is on a little bit of a hill, but that might just be me being lazy. And then once you're on campus, we have 1,500 dedicated bike parking spaces across 80 locations on campus. So they're basically everywhere throughout campus, loads of room to park your bike, and you're almost always within sight of a bike rack. In addition to this, most colleges have dedicated cycle spaces, which you access with your university ID card. And these are like warm, dry areas, so it's really good to store your bike there, especially if it's raining or 
um, if you're not going to be cycling for a while, if you're going home, for example. And then we, once you're on campus again, we have different showering and changing facilities. So that can be useful if you're commuting from a little further than the city or if it's raining or whatever and you want to have a shower and change your clothes when you get here. Then if you really love cycling, we have the Cycling Society, which is open for anyone from beginners to really advanced cyclists. And we have a mountain biking society if you want to be a little more adventurous about it or if you want to try out something new. And Green Lancaster, which is an organisation I'm going to mention in a second, runs Bring a Bike and the Big Bike Sale and Doctor Bike. So Bring a Bike is a campaign to encourage cycling. There are frequent competitions and a dedicated team space on Microsoft Teams for you can, where you can talk about cycling and ask questions and get advice and everything like that. And they also run maintenance workshops. So I attended one of them a few weeks ago and they tailor it to your ability as a cyclist. So it's in really small groups. And that meant that I ended up learning how to fix a few different things that I didn't know how to fix before and also learned some maintenance things that I didn't know before. And I was also given a free puncture repair kit, which it's always good to have a few of them hanging around. Then the big bike sale that happens once a year at the start of the academic year, you can buy refurbished or secondhand bikes for really low prices. And so this is really useful if you didn't cycle before uni or if you don't want to bring your bike with you. I used it because I call Somerset home, so that's really far away. And I didn't really have room for a bike in my car when I first got to Lancaster, so I bought one at the big bike sale. And Dr. Bike is a fully qualified bike mechanic who offers... Um, professional advice like bike maintenance, safety checks, and also you can buy different accessories, which at, again at low prices, which is really just really useful for you, especially when it gets dark in winter, you might want to buy lights or luminous clothes. Then if cycling's not your thing, we have buses and routes to walk between campus and town, and town itself is really accessible by trains. So there are 40 buses an hour between campus and the city during term time, so you never have to wait long for a bus. And we have bus passes, which have a discount for Lancaster Uni students, which that's really useful if you're going to be using the bus more than a couple of times a week. For example, if you live in town um, and you're coming onto campus for uni. There are even different bus stops on campus if you want to get the bus from the top of campus to the bottom. I don't know why you would. It's not that big, um, but it is an option. I think maybe if you have shopping or something. And then on Wednesdays, there are free buses between campus and Sainsbury's in town. And you can also use that to go and shop at other supermarkets and then get the bus back. Like Sainsbury's is pretty close to Lidl, so I used to use it for that when I lived on campus. We're also not far from the Lake District, which is a really beautiful area of the UK. And you can easily get a bus from Lancaster to Kendall. So that's if you want to explore the Lake District in maybe a more sustainable way than driving. So Green Lancaster, I've mentioned this a couple of times now, so I think I should explain what it is. It's a partnership between Lancaster University and the Students' Union. This means it's students and the university working together. They're devoted to engaging students, staff and the local community in creating practical responses to the climate and ecological emergencies. Students can volunteer there and there are a couple of paid roles that are held by students. And Green Lancaster runs a number of different workshops, uh, training courses, volunteering opportunities and events throughout the year. They're really, really a huge part of student life. And they have a bunch of different projects that affect campus in a sustainable way that they run throughout the academic year. And these projects are based around four areas, transport and mobility, which I've mentioned a little bit, biodiversity and agriculture, energy supply and demand and resources in the circular economy. So it covers almost all areas of sustainability. Here are some of the projects you can get involved in as a student. So the first one is the Eco Hub, which I've mentioned before, and that's that space where students can grow their own crops and keep chickens and bees. And the picture on the right, sorry, I don't know me left and right. The picture on the right is some of our chickens that we have. They're absolutely gorgeous. And it's really exciting at the moment because we've had some chicks who've been born and they are extremely cute. There's also Eco Woods, which is an area of woodland managed by Green Lancaster, which you can volunteer at as a student. I've not spent much time there, but I know it's coming along really well and it's a really cool area of land. Then Eco Wild, which is a series of trips organised by Green Lancaster, where you go and undertake some practical conservation work. So they've visited areas along Morecambe Bay, which is the coastline near Lancaster, as well as travelling up into Cumbria in the Lake District, along the Trough of Boland. 
And even further afield, I think that there's a trip coming up soon that's going to an island on the west coast of Scotland. So it's a good opportunity to see some see some spaces. And then finally, we have No Mo May, which is organised by Green Lancaster. And that's something I've mentioned before. That's where we don't cut the grass during the month of May. And it leads to all these lovely wildflowers, which you can see a little bit in the picture on the left, which also shows our university library. And here are some of the pictures from the Eco Wild Trips. As you can see, it involves visiting some really gorgeous natural landscapes and different areas. And honestly, it's a really good activity opportunity to see more of the countryside and some of the lovely rural areas in the northwest. It's also a place where you can learn skills and developing develop your existing skills and it's just a really good way to meet other people who are also interested in sustainability and go on some really cool adventures. So you may have heard about the colleges earlier today, so we have nine colleges at Lancaster and we have a series of competitions that run each year between them so we're quite competitive with each other and one of these competitions is called the sustainability challenge and that involves coming up as a team with a sustainable solution or idea that can be implemented on campus and you will work together as a team using each other's strengths and different experiences to put together this plan of action and put together this project and how you're going to implement it and finally, you'll have an opportunity to pitch it to a board of judges at a final event. And the judges will be a variety of people from Green Lancaster, academics who've been working on sustainability. Sometimes there's people from facilities at the university and people from the students' union. There's usually one team per college. Occasionally, they'll combine a college into one bigger team or occasionally there'll be two teams per college. And for the last four years in a row, Pendle College has won, which is my college. However, this year, Boland College won which is, it's good to have a bit of variety, even though I was very proud to be part of Pendle with that. And in 2019, after winning, Pendle College was given the opportunity to attend this conference in Copenhagen, um, which is, that's where the picture's from. You can see me and my team there, and you can just about see some of the conference judges who were looking at us as we presented. And it was a great opportunity to meet people interested in sustainability at universities, other students, other academics, and discuss some of our ideas with experts in the field. Then if you're perhaps a little less competitive or you want to get involved in other things as well, there are a number of different student societies that you can join that are tailored around sustainability. So the first one we have is Edible Campus, and they're the student society that works with Green Lancaster to run the Eco Hub. And they work really, really closely with Green Lancaster in some of the planning. They also organise events and social events around it. Then we also have Lancaster Environment Centre Society, which is for anyone studying at the Environment Centre or anyone who's interested in those subjects and wants to learn a little bit more. I think the Environment Centre Society also have their own netball team and they might have another sports team as well. Then we have a Hedgehog Friendly Campus Society. So Hedgehog Friendly Campus is a national accreditation scheme looking at how universities have adapted their campuses to support hedgehogs and to make safe habitats. So we have a society that's dedicated completely to achieving this accreditation. And last year we were awarded silver, which is the second highest award you can get. Then if it's being outdoors that you like, we have the hiking society, the mountaineering club, and we have a mountain biking society. We also have a caving society, I think. And there's an opportunity to see all of the different societies at, we call it Freshers Fair. It's an event at the start of the academic year where all the different societies advertise themselves. You can see a picture of that in the, the picture. I'm not sure what year that's from, but it's, I would absolutely recommend going. It's a good way to find out what's on offer. Then if you're more interested in the politics society, like the politics of it all, then we have the politics society, which I was part of during my undergraduate degree and you can learn a little bit more about how political systems work, how change is achieved and how to make it long lasting. And then they also organise a number of different talks with external speakers and academics and debates, sometimes between students, sometimes between students and academics, sometimes between people in industry. And as well as all of, all of these societies will have a number of social events throughout the year. And then if you have an idea for a society that's not on this list, you can always build your own. Um, Lancaster has, I think, over 230 societies, but it's growing every single year. And we're really interested to hear from anyone who wants to set up their own society. 
there are new societies literally every year. And it's one of the best ways I think that you can have a lasting impact on campus and on the university. So in terms of studying sustainability, some of the, a lot of the courses you'd be interested in will come out of Lancaster Environment Centre. So they organise things like biology, environmental sciences, geography, zoology and ecology and conservation. I think um, ecology and conservation and zoology are particularly interesting. I don't think I knew that they existed before I arrived at Lancaster, but they're both things that I would love to have studied. And then we also have things like environmental law, which is a specialist postgrad course. And there you can learn all about sustainability and in terms of legislation and how to represent basically Mother Earth in law. And that's just really important. And it's gaining more and more importance at the moment. Then you also have courses that aren't directly linked to sustainability, but will have a big aspect of sustainability within them. So things like politics and philosophy, sociology, and then also business studies. So Lancaster University Management School is really dedicated to sustainability. There are a number of different staff working on sustainability and a lot of partnerships between the management school and the Environment Centre. A lot of my colleagues as a postgrad student are based in the management school and are researching things like sustainable business, leadership and management, everything like that. Then an area that Lancaster really stands out for in sustainability is in its research. So Lancaster Environment Centre is the world's largest and highest rated multidisciplinary centre for environmental research. Bit of a mouthful. It's also third in the UK for real world impact of its research. So everything that we do is really, really relevant and actually just really important for society. So researchers at the Environment Centre are from all sorts of backgrounds. We have everyone from anthropologists, um, physicists, environmental chemists, environmental scientists, all the way to like social scientists like myself. And then in LEC, the research is focused around a few different groups. So the first group is food and agriculture. That's looking at how to solve food issues and how to manage food sustainably. Everything from soil science through to genetically modified crops through to water systems, everything like that. Then the second is eco-innovation, and this is the area that I'm part of, and that's looking at how new technologies can build sustainability and how we can use innovation and use creation to drive sustainability and to drive how we can use organisations to drive sustainable innovation. Then the third is the Anthropocene. So that term refers to the period of natural history where humans have had a significant impact. And the fourth is landscapes and the fifth is tropical futures, which focuses on specifically in tropical areas. I think that group probably has the best field trips, but I might be wrong. And then as a student, you have loads of research opportunities as an undergrad student as well. Everything from internships, which can be part time during term time through to working either with the Environment Centre or local businesses on internships throughout the summer. And then you can also be a research assistant on different projects, all the way up to scholarships, especially if you're finishing up your undergrad. So my, I'm currently studying a master's by research and that's based in Lancaster Environment Centre and my fees are paid for completely. So as are my living costs. Lancaster is really the place to be if you want to get into sustainable academia. I know loads of undergrad students who have done partnerships with local businesses or who have had volunteering or work experience within the research centre for LEC. But it's not just a university that benefits from sustainability and Lancaster does a lot to help local areas be more sustainable and a lot to drive sustainable change. Like I said before, Lancaster Environment Centre is the third in the UK for real world impact for its research. And this is all part of that. The Centre for Global Eco Innovation, which is actually the centre that sponsors my master's programme, partners students up with local organisations. For example, I'm working with a company that has a recycling uh, centre based in the northwest. But we've also had students working with local B&Bs, insurance agencies, um, I think someone was working on a National Trust heritage site, everything in between. And this year we started a project called Love Your Lake, which involves training members of the local community to gather data on Lake Windermere, which is up in the Lake District. And this basically empowers people to understand more about climate science without necessarily being a scientist. 
and to, just to get involved with real world research. And then obviously it benefits the university because we get all this amazing, good quality data. And Morecambe, which is the town essentially next to Lancaster, is going to be the site for the next Eden project called Eden Project North. So you might have heard of the Eden project down in Cornwall and now it's coming up to Lancashire in the coming years. I think it's due to be finished in 2024 and it involves a direct partnership between Lancaster and Lancaster University and the Eden project, which means that students are getting the opportunity to work with the Eden project. There's research and ideas being shared between the two organisations. I think it's a really exciting time to be thinking about coming up here to Lancaster especially if you want to study something like geography or environmental science, um, you'll have the opportunity to visit the Eden project and hopefully get, get involved a bit. And finally, we have the Community Benefits Fund. This awards local communities across the Lancaster district with funding for community-based and environmental projects. After Lancaster completed its wind turbine in 2012, they used some of the funding from that to benefit the local community. So each year, the fund allocates up to £20,000 to local, like so Lancaster-based, not-for-profit organisations, charities, trusts, community organisations or like volunteer groups to support a sustainable project for the year. And I think last year, that funding was sent to a local church who rebuilt a church hall in a really, with like sustainable architecture. It's quite cool. You can visit it if you're in Lancaster. And I would, well, I like sustainable architecture, so I'm interested in it and I visited. But this year, I'm not sure who it's, if it's been allocated yet, but this year it'll go to a different project doing something else that's probably equally or more exciting. So that is everything for me. Thank you guys so much for attending. Um, and please let us know if you have any questions.